Chips. Chipping. Coming up on JC's Rip Track. Hi there. My name is John and welcome to JC's Rip Track. If this is your first time here and you'd like tips and advice on how to turn your plastic bottles into something that you would find on the railroad today, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. So here's a question. Have you ever tried doing a chipped paint effect on your models? What techniques do you use? Please let me know in the comments section down below. If you haven't already done so, check out the first video in this series which gives an overview of a process for weathering factory painted models. This video covers the fifth step of eight, and if you stick around to the end, you can connect with my other videos in this set. I have to admit, learning to do chipped paint on models is what drew me further into the craft of weathering. So this was my starting point. This even started before I got back into model railroading as an adult, when I was playing games like Warhammer 40,000 or other tabletop miniature games. Because of the models that I was painting for these games, I wanted to learn how to make them gungy, dirty, dusty, rusty, and otherwise just simply beat up. And as I learned, there are a whole number of ways to get some very realistic looking results. And today I'm going to share with you one of the easiest ways to do it, but not only that, a few different ways that you can use it. And this, broadly speaking, is just one type of what I call additive chipping, where paint is added to the model to simulate the effect of chipping. And all that you really need to do this is some acrylic paint and a sponge. Remember that rail cars and locomotives are constantly in use, moving goods from one place to another. They are always on duty, they are always being used, and they're always being walked on, scraped against, and all kinds of different abrasions that eventually wear down and wear away the paint. Workers climb all over them to load and unload them, or to make sure they're in good working order. As good as the paint can be, no paint job can withstand daily abrasive contact over years of continuous use. Chipping represents paint wearing off or being scraped away. You're not just representing paint wearing down to the metal or the wood, but you're also representing outer layers of paint wearing down to the next layer of paint. While there are some go-to colors that you can use while you are chipping, most of it depends upon the model you're actually working on. The first type of chipping that I'm going to share with you today is wearing away the logos and the road markings down to the next layer of paint. This HO scale Rapido gondola is highly detailed but still way too clean given what I have learned from comparable prototype pictures. The first thing that you should do is airbrush or spray a matte coat over the model. This will protect the previous step and give the acrylic paint something to stick to. So in setting up my paint palette, I sometimes keep a piece of paper towel handy. Choose or mix colors that match the base color of the car that you're working on or trying to chip down to. In this case, I used some of my red Citadel paints in a mix to match the color. I did this by testing a few brush strokes in the less obvious part of the model until I was happy with the result. I like to keep the paint thicker than I normally do when I use my brush. The next part was applying the chips using the sponge. When it comes to a sponge, I'm largely using a leftover packing sponge that you might find in a camera carry case or product packaging. You can also buy makeup sponges as they work just as well. The main thing that you need to do is to pluck and shape the sponge to create a random, uneven surface, but without any large obvious pieces sticking out of it. Once you're happy with the shape of the sponge, dip it in the mix of the paint that you're using and then immediately dab the sponge on the paper towel, taking off most of the paint. You can even reload the sponge by smudging it into the paint that you've just pulled off. Once you think you've gotten enough of it off, dab off a little bit more and then carefully and sparingly dab it onto the markings of the model. You always, always want to dab with a sponge, never smear. This creates the illusion of the markings being worn down to the previous layers of paint. Since these are acrylics, they dry very quickly and you can see the results right away. And now chipping down to the metal, and really this is what you came to see, isn't it? 
but the principles are just the same as what you just saw. This time, the color that you want is to represent the base color of the metal that you're chipping down to. And so it depends upon the metal. Usually, if you're taking it down to steel, a good starting point for this base metal color is black mixed with the equivalent of burnt umber. If using Citadel paints, a mix of Abaddon black and dry eyed bark, for example, works very well. To save some time, you could get a dedicated chipping color such as AK Interactive's chipped paint, which is what you're going to see me use here. On the other hand, if you're chipping down to something like aluminum or a different metal, keep in mind the color of the metal that you're chipping down to. Chipping should be done sparingly unless the prototype itself warrants it, such as the Sioux Line car that you've seen me work on. Even then, it is very easy to overdo this, so keep it light. As a guideline, ladders, walkways, brake wheels, and hatches should be the first place to target with the sponge. Then the top edges of the car, the bottom areas of sliding doors, scrapes and such, on the other hand, are better applied with a small brush, and I'll be detailing that in a later video. Sponge chipping is also effective when applying basic brush colors as well. In this case, you're looking for anywhere from dark brown to red brown to orange brown. You can apply this over areas where you have already chipped with the darker color, or apply them straight to represent chips that have been around for a bit longer. If you like, you can also use a very small brush to paint some of this color inside larger chips showing the rust building up. Doing it this way combines very well with the rust streaking which I will be covering in the next video. This video has barely scratched the surface on chipping techniques. This is a very deep well that I will be coming back to often as there are dozens and dozens of techniques for achieving the look of chipped and worn paint. And there are new techniques coming out all the time and I want to try and keep you updated on them. And the techniques can also be combined for different types of effects depending upon what you're looking to achieve. Check out the other videos in this series, and if you are looking for ways to get the most out of your painting and weathering projects, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon and you can be notified for any time that I put up a new video. So thanks for watching, and good luck, and may you keep on track.